Maverick Doberman's interview. Question. Introduce yourself, tell us about your history with dogs. Answer. My name is Kristen and I'm currently living in southwestern Quebec, Canada. I breed Doberman crossbreeds under the kennel name Maverick. I grew up with many different breeds of dogs as a child, some mutts and some registered purebreds. During my cooperative education course in high school, I was placed in a veterinary hospital working as a vet assistant. It was where I encountered my first Doberman, a gorgeous red boy by the name of Victor. He left such an impression on 16-year-old me, I knew I would have to have my own one day. Question. Why did you choose to outcross Dobermans? Answer. The breed suffers from many health ailments. Dilated cardiomyopathy, DCM, and cancer being two of the big ones. Many breeders are holding out hope for a genetic test that will allow us to breed away from DCM, however, if and when that day comes, I fear it will be too little too late. During the breed's creation, the two world wars each caused a substantial loss of dogs which caused a bottleneck of the breed. Popular sires also had a profound and lasting effect and the practice still continues today. This can both be seen in pedigrees as well as several genetic studies. The Doberman suffers from a severe lack of diversity, and what little does remain is not well distributed. I realized that the only way to make an attempt to mitigate the health issues in the breed, without creating yet another bottleneck, was to introduce new genetic material. This can only be done through crossbreeding. No kennel club was interested in doing an official outcross, and the only one that was, required authorization from the Debermans Breed Club in the country of origin. The request was denied. I realized that unless something was done soon, our beloved breed would not get any better, only worse. Many dogs are dying at 2, 3 and 4, and I've seen dogs dying of DCM as young as 8 months old. This is unacceptable. No one should have to fear their dog dropping dead of a heart attack at any given moment. I understood that I would have to take it upon myself to do an outcross, just to prove it could be done. Question. What breeds do you use to outcross to create Maverick de Bermans? Answer. My crosses currently consist of Cane Corso, Labrador and Rottweiler. However other breeders are using different breeds such as the Malinois and Hunting Hounds for their outcrosses. I hope to eventually breed all our F3 or F4 dogs together once type and temperament is set. Question. Why did you choose these breeds to create the Maverick de Bermans? Answer. Thank idea is to increase heterozygosity, so it isn't so much which breeds were chosen as it is over which dogs. The goal is to breed back to type, however the dogs selected also had characteristics that I felt that were similar to that of a Doberman, or those that I felt could improve them in some ways. Question. What characteristics about these breeds do you think added to your program? Answer. The Corso has definitely added bone and substance to the dogs from that line. The Labrador utilized was field bred and born to work and passed that drive on in spades. The Rottweiler has improved the front structure of his progeny, de Bermans typically have quite a straight front. Each brings something of value along with their different gene set. Question. Is there any registries register your dogs? If so which ones? If there isn't any would you consider registering your dogs with a registry that specializes in outcrosses crosses breed creations? Answer. Currently my dogs are not registered. I and my colleagues are keeping track of the pedigrees ourselves for the moment. We hope that our dogs will one day be included in the registered population, so we keep very accurate records. All dogs are DNA diversity tested through UC Davis which doubles as a parentage test. Should the dogs be once again accepted through an official registry sometime in the future, the pedigrees with DNA proof will be available. Question. Since you're Canadian what are your thoughts on cropped ears? What is your personal opinion on the new law passed on banning cropped ears? Answer. 
I prefer a cropped ear, however I respect the right to choose which is why some of my dogs have gone to their new homes without a crop. I am against the new ban put in place in Alberta banning crop and dock. Cropping and docking now only remain legal in Ontario, Canada. I am located within Quebec but will continue to take my puppies to qualified veterinarians in Ontario to be cropped and docked. Canada put a ban in place, I will cease the practice to abide by the law, however it is a law based on public opinion, not elective procedures as they put it. If it were about the latter, unnecessary sterilization would also be banned like it has been in other countries that have banned cropping and docking. Question. How did you develop your passion for dogs? Answer. As a family, I have a passion for all animals. From reptiles and insects to dogs, ferrets and the even more exotic. I have always had a pet in my life no matter where on the globe I lived. Dogs have always been the top of the list when it comes to companion animals however. They simply complete my life in a way that no other pet has yet to do. Question. Who was your mentors in the dog life? Answer. I had a few over the years. When I first branched out on my own however, I had no one, and dove head first into a world I didn't even know existed. Thankfully over the years many people have helped me and encouraged me to think outside the box and although not all agree with my ideas, they still respect me and know I am making my own path yet doing so ethically. Question. History of the Maverick Dobermans as you see it? Answer. It started a number of years ago with an idea, the idea that closed pedigree systems aren't sustainable. Many breeds have enough genetic material to work with without the need to open up the stud books. However many more are in desperate need of it. That idea was what set me down a path of trying to find a way for breeders to see just how dire the situation actually is. One of my good friends in the breed called me a maverick for what I was trying to do and that stuck with me. When I made the decision to put my name and reputation on the line to breed crossbreeds, I decided to go with the kennel name of Maverick. Question. What is the purpose and goal of your program? Answer. The purpose is to create a dog, that for all intents and purposes looks and acts like a Doberman, but contains genetic material introduced from another breed further back in the pedigree. My goals are to one day have a line of dogs that are 99% Doberman, but have new genetic material and increased heterozygosity to help reduce the incidence of health issues in the breed. We are ensuring we retain this diversity utilizing the UC Davis Canine Diversity Test. Question. What jobs do your dogs have if any? Answer. Currently, I have dogs competing in sports such as dock diving, barn hunting, obedience and agility. I also have some training in bite work. One of my dogs is also currently an active service dog and excelling in his required tasks. Each are active companions bringing joy to their families, which I feel is as important a job as any. Question. What standards are you looking to produce and maintain? Answer. My goal is to breed toward the Deberman breed standard. We are utilizing many different lines, North American and European show lines as well as working lines, but we hope that eventually all our dogs will meet the American Kennel Club and Canadian Kennel Club standard of the Deberman. Question. Do you show your dogs or participate any special training? Answer. Our dogs being crossbreeds can't compete in conformation, however the United Kennel Club allows crossbred dogs to compete without sterilization, so I have stated competing with my male in UKC events. They are not too common in Canada yet sadly, but we hope that this upcoming season will prove successful. Question. Ideal living conditions. Answer. 
They are bred to the de Burman standard, so although the earlier generations like F1 and the second of May have slightly different coat types, overall they do best in weather that isn't too hot or cold. They are well suited to most styles of living so long as they are kept active for a period each day. They prefer to be with their people so do not make good kennel dogs. Some tend to have a higher prey drive than others, but overall they can be kept with most animals without issue so long as firm boundaries are put in place. They are smart and do require consistent training. Question. If you were to cross another breed into your line what other breed would you use? Answer. We currently have a wide variety of breeds being introduced and then backcrossed, however if I were to start another line from scratch, I would probably select a Jagged Terrier or a Bull Terrier for the initial F1. Question. What other breeds if any have you worked with? Answer. I myself have worked with many different breeds of dogs, however throughout my life the purebreds I have owned outside de Burmans are Poodles, Dalmatians and Beagles. Question. What is your favorite breed besides the de Burman? Answer. I absolutely love the Rajapalayam, a rare native Indian breed. I am certain I will import a couple to Canada one day when I have more space. Question. What is your morning and evening routine with your dogs? Is your family involved as well? Answer. I have three young children and they help me with simple tasks like feeding and watering as well as playing with the dogs. I only have two dogs currently in my possession with the rest on cornership. My kids are also invaluable during the socialization process of young puppies. Exercise. Question. What does your kennel setup look like? Answer. My dogs aren't currently raised in any sort of kennel. They live in the home with me and my family and have a lot of time devoted to them individually. De Burmans are very handler-oriented dogs, often called Velcro dogs since they want to be your constant shadow. They thrive if they are able to have one person to devote themselves to. I place much of my breeding stock in Kuwanership homes to allow each dog to have their own person. It allows me to continue my program while simultaneously introduce new people into the program themselves. Question. Any last words you would like to share? Answer. I am not alone in my endeavors and I have other breeders contributing to this project behind the scenes. Without them, this all would not be possible. We do have a plan and it is slowly taking shape. Perhaps one day an official outcross will be authorized by a kennel club somewhere. If that day comes I will celebrate, even if my dogs aren't a part of it. I'm not doing this for fame, fortune or notoriety, I'm doing it for the breed. If the only thing to come of my project is proof that crossbreeding Dobermans and breeding back to type is possible, I considering it a resounding success. Finally, I'd like to thank everyone who is helping me and supporting my efforts. Even those who don't support me but respect me enough to understand I'm doing everything ethically and responsibly, I thank you.